Hey, comic lovers, E-Money, and the old man back with you again for another episode. So, what do we have going on today? Well, we have some new information concerning the story arc for the new Obi-Wan Kenobi series. Also, we have some new info on the status of the fifth installment of the Indiana Jones franchise. The fifth? Yeah. I thought they were done after three. No. There, there, there were... There okay, was a so I know what this one's about. You've got Indy with his walker... You got some Nazi in a wheelchair behind him going, I'm going to get you, Jones. I mean, come on. <laughs> All right. So we have that and we have our comic book reviews and previews. And then at the end, I have an all new movieism here for you. All right. Like Indiana Jones says, if you want to be a good archaeologist, you got to get out of the library. This is Back Issues. All right, comic lovers, so before we get started today, don't forget to subscribe to our channel, turn on notifications, give us a thumbs up, and if you like, leave us a comment. All right, so uh, the new Obi-Wan Kenobi series we knew was going to be uh, sometime after the events, of, the events of Revenge of the Sith. Which movie is that? That's episode three. Okay. But, and this will be the first live action show that is not in the uh, Mandalorian Boba Fett timeline. So this is going to be... So, no Mando? No Mando. Unless, you know, maybe like a very young Mando, maybe. Because we know his origin goes back to uh, the Clone Wars. So, uh, when he was found by the Mandalorians. So, I mean, I guess, you know, if you want to see a young Mando, maybe. But probably won't go in that direction. Alright, so, what do we know that's new? Up until now, we have been under the assumption that Obi-Wan will be pursued by Darth Vader's Inquisitors, and uh, people who have watched uh, Star Wars Rebels will be familiar with those guys. And, uh, you know, they'll be uh, hunting for him on Tatooine, trying to lure him out of hiding. Well, that's part of it, but there's more to it than that. Oh. Instead, it's a young Jedi, Nari, who tracks Kenobi down to Tatooine after being inspired by his message sent out to his fellow Force users during the madness of Order 66. So the plucky hero hopes to restore the Jedi Order, but is unaware he is jeopardizing Kenobi's far more important mission of protecting Luke Skywalker from his father, Vader, and the Emperor. So we're going to be introduced to a new character uh, on uh, a new Jedi in Obi-Wan Kenobi, but also... It sounds like we're going to see the Inquisitors, which will be the first time we've seen we've seen them in live action. You know, Favreau has done a great job of bringing characters that have only been known in animation and bringing them into live action, and hopefully this one will be no exception. Uh, in the last uh, two shows, you know, Book of Boba Fett and The Mandalorian, you know, he has done uh, Ahsoka Tano, he's done Bo Katan, and most recently Cad Bane from Book of Boba Fett. Cad Bane's a badass. Yeah. So all of those started out in animation, but now live action, and you know we're going to see some more of that here. Cat Bane ain't dead. No, probably not. All right, so uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi is set to premiere on Disney Plus on May 25th. All right, next up, we have new information on the fifth Indiana Jones movie. So Frank Marshall, producer recently announced that production on the still untitled fifth installment of the iconic franchise was nearing the home stretch and now he's taken to twitter reveal that the, that filming has officially wrapped so you know what can we expect from Indiana jones 5 well according to marshall the fifth installment will find dr jones once again coming up against his favorite foes the nazis well, of course and we also have confirmation that the movie will be set in the 1960s during the space race, possibly incorporating elements of Operation Paperclip. What's that make in the 80s? Uh, he's, he's up there. Hmm. The setting would place this adventure after the events of Kingdom of the Crystal Skull, but since previous set photos have confirmed that Ford will be de-aged for certain scenes, it's safe to assume that the story will take place during different time periods. So I'm a little concerned about that because, you know, uh, fans are going to pitch a bitch if, uh, you know, the majority of the movie is, takes place in the past and you have, you know, some lookalike actor who is, you know, going to come out looking like a de-aged Harrison Ford is, you know, doing the bulk of the movie. 
where, I mean, hopefully they're not going to do it where, like, you know, modern day or, uh, you know, uh, you know, present age in uh, Harrison Ford as Indiana Jones is going to be, you know, you know, reading his journals in a library somewhere, recalling his adventures during the, the, uh, the, uh, the, you know, World War II and all that. And then you have the, you know, younger guy, you know, doing all the action scenes. Oh. Fan, fans wouldn't like that, I don't think. I mean, some people would have, might have said just, you know, leave well enough alone, don't do the movie at all. But, uh, you know, we're, we're past that. So, you know, I guess we're going to get what we're going to get. All right. So, Indiana Jones 5 is supposed to come out June 30th of 2023. But, you know, something that far off, you know, all kinds of things can change. That's forever ago. Yeah. All right. So, there is your entertainment news for this week. Now, on to this week's movie review, or uh, comic review. Sorry. All right. So, if you've never seen this before... We, we grade these comic books on a five-shield rating system. We give it two scores, one for writing and story, the other one for artwork, and then we combine the four scores together and give it an average overall score. So first we want to talk about our mentions this week. We don't call them honorable mentions because, you know, might have something bad to say about them. But Not this week. I think it's all good this week. All right, first up, a... 12-issue maxi-series from DC. Um, this is number five of DC versus Vampires. All right. So by this time, uh, Green Arrow and Batman have teamed up because they have confirmed to each other that they are not, in fact, infected with the uh, vampire virus. How are you going to have a vampire story and a guy named Batman who is not a vampire? You know, the, uh, the ironic hero of this story. All right, so unfortunately, these two are uh, confronted by the rest of the Justice League, who believes that they are infected. In fact, you know, a well, few... Some of them don't believe that. Well, a few of the... Well, because they are, in fact, the infected vampires. So, some of the League members are being played into thinking that Batman and Green Arrow are infected. So, you know, uh, it's always said that Batman, you know, he always plans ahead, and uh, he always... already, already Always has an ace up his sleeve. Well, he's got the files on everybody. Yeah. So, you know how, like, you've seen, like, in spy movies and TV shows, whenever a uh, terrorist or somebody gets captured, so before he can be interrogated, you know, he has a uh, false tooth with cyanide in it, and he just has to bite down on it and, uh, you know, kills himself? Well, uh, Batman had a similar idea. He has a capsule of kryptonite gas in his false tooth. So, you know, if he ever gets up close and personal with the big man, he knows exactly, he has a, you know, little ace up his tooth. So, and then, you know, he has, you know, plans to take down all the other League members. So, he does a pretty good job of uh, fighting them off and trying to get to the bottom of who's actually infected. So... And you know what, this is one of the uh, comics, you know, we've said it a million times before, how it would probably be on our top three every week or every month if it just had a little better artwork. Artwork is just so-so. You know, we, we both scored it four shields on writing, but only three shields on the art. Right. So that's why it's it's out of the uh, top three. But still, still good stuff here. All right. All right. So DC versus Vampires number five ends up with three, three and, and a half, half shields. shields. All right. Next up, this is a book from Boom Studios. Now, as dear to my heart as Firefly was as a show, I know it was closer to your heart. Mm. I mean, I never dressed up in a costume and played one of the characters. He has. So, from Boom Studios, all new Firefly, number one. All right. So, in this uh, new story, it takes place, uh, seems like it's a few years after the events of the Serenity movie. And so, Jane has gotten himself into a bit of trouble. Oh, no. Yeah. Not Jane. Yeah. So, uh, you know, Malcolm and the rest of the crew are tasked with uh, getting him out of trouble at the expense of getting supplies at this way station they're in. All right. So, um, also, the Serenity has a new captain. Now, Malcolm's still here, but he's not the captain anymore. Now, who do you think would be the captain of uh, the Serenity, if not Malcolm? Uh, what was Gina Torres' character? Zoe. 
Zoe. Zoe should be captain. Yeah. You would think so, right? Mm -hmm. But in fact, a person who I would probably put in the bottom three of the crew members suited to be captain. Well, bottom three would be Jane. Mm -hmm. um, River. Yeah. Because she's kind of crazy. Mm -hmm. Who else? Kaylee. Kaylee's the captain. Huh? Kaylee's the captain. Mm -hmm. Now, how that happened, I do not know. I mean, if Malcolm weren't there, I could maybe see that happening. But Malcolm is the captain, and... You know, somehow he let Kaylee become captain, I, or yeah. maybe not let her. I don't know. If several people weren't there, maybe. Yeah. All right. So, and also we have, uh, you know, since the events of Serenity, we have a couple little ones running around the ship. And also we have a new crew member by the name of Leonard. Uh, we don't really know much about him other than that he's there. I know he's got a pencil-thin mustache, which means someday he's going to be a villain. Yeah. <laughs> All right, and, you know, this is another one where, you know, artwork kind of held it back a little bit because, like, uh, the images of Malcolm here, like, I know it's Malcolm, but I just don't see the likeness of Nathan Fillion in the artwork here. All right, so all new Firefly number one from Boom Studios with three and a half? Three and a half after it was rounded up. Three and a half shields out of five. All right, so there's our mentions for this week. Now on to our top three. All right, so guess what? You're never going to believe this. There was a three-way tie for number ah. one. So coming up with some way to break the tie, we, we had our usual type of contest, and we had these big, giant, patio size Jenga blocks. So we built the tower, we played Jenga. I thought the big blocks, because I don't have the steadiest of hands, I thought the big blocks would help me, but they were just too damn heavy. I mean, I struggled with them just getting them out of the tower. So, eh, he won. <laughs> so if you got any problems with the order of these three comics, email eMoney and tell him he sucks. <laughs> and there's the email address right there behind us. Um, but at any rate, number three of the top three per e-money. Now, this comic book is from a company called Bad Idea. Most of you have heard me rant and rave about Bad Idea's marketing. Supposedly, this is the last book Bad Idea is going to put out. Hmm. If you believe that, you would also believe that I'm the Batman. Well, maybe I am. But anyway, so our number three spot, Monster Kill Squad, number four. All right. So in this uh, supposedly final issue, Pandora is attacking the Monster Kill Squad headquarters. <clears throat> so during all this anarchy, you know, he, she, is, uh, she has summoned monsters both from Earth and from uh, other worlds. So the Sasquatches, the uh, tribe of Sasquatches that are attacking... They want to kill the half-breed, who is part of the Monster Kill Squad, half-human, half-Sasquatch. And so he has to uh, fight the Alpha for control of the pack. And then also, there's kind of an interesting um, uh, way to work Pandora into this story here. You know, it's, you know, she says that, uh, you know, worship is all about perception. And... Apparently, when she first arrived on the scene, you know, she was a, you know, caring, giving goddess to, uh, to earthlings. But the, uh, the uh, human mortals, you know, uh, male mortals, you know, they couldn't have uh, a, a woman as, you know, the, the head god or the most loved god of the pantheon or whatever. So they started to write stories about her, write lies about her. And, you know, enough of the story spreads you know, people start to see uh, uh, Pandora in a different light. So, you know, what, you know, she was before, she wasn't now because the beliefs, you know, reshaped, you know, who she was and how she got her power. So, you know, now, you know, she's the bad guy because, you know, we made her that way. So, kind of interesting take there. And so the uh, Monster Kill Squad has to come together in order to defeat Pandora and her monsters. So, uh... Monster Kill Squad number four, supposedly the finale, ends up with four shields out of five, our number three pick for this week. All right, my last rant, hopefully, about Bad Idea 
is it, the only thing I have against bad ideas, their marketing plan, the bizarre things they did to increase their sales. And they've got great creative teams. They put out some really good comic books. I just didn't like the way they marketed them. Hmm. A comic book company should advertise, should get the comic books out on time, should have good quality paper, which they always did. And, and, and I mean, the, the cardstock covers, great. They should put out a good product. If you can't succeed by doing those things, give it up. You shouldn't be in business. Hmm. So hopefully these creative teams will find work somewhere in the comic book industry. Enough said. All right, number two, from Image Comics, this is a um, fantasy story that I thoroughly enjoyed the first one. Um, second one's even better. Um, Aerosmith, Behind Enemy Lines, number two. All right, so this <coughs> takes place in a um, sort of a World War I uh, type universe where fantasy creatures are thrown into the mix. Uh, it kind of reminds me, if you ever watched uh, Carnival Row on Amazon Prime, it was, I guess, around turn of the century, uh, like, like 1900 uh, type era. But there's all, and I think that, that's totally a, a fantasy world. It looks like, you know, turn of the century uh, Europe, but it's, uh, the, 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 the names didn't match anything. And in, the landscape seemed totally different. Yeah. So anyways. Uh, and in the story, you have all these other fantasy creatures like fairies and uh, satyrs and bonds, and I think maybe there's a minotaur in there somewhere that's thrown into the mix, and you know they're you know they're uh, supposed to you know coexist with humans. Well, this is very similar, except um, a lot of creatures are held in higher regard than they were in uh, Carnival Row, like dragons, for example. Uh, dragons are similar in regards to bonding as they were in Aragon, where uh, they're supposed to bond with a uh, humanoid creature, you know, humans mostly in this one, uh, whereas other creatures aren't held as in high regard, like trolls and such. But anyways, uh, the main character of this story uh, is a dragon flyer, and he is intentionally caught and uh, moved to a POW camp to uh, carry out a spy mission. And, you know, he is in the uh, POW camp trying to uh, wait for his contact when the prison gets visited by a, uh, uh, P or a uh, VIP. And he uh, fancies himself a baron. And he is... It looks like a Prussian to me. Yeah. And he is also a dragon rider or uh, dragon user, whatever you want to call it. But uh, his dragon seems to be a bit bigger than your average dragon. More fierce. Yeah. So, you know, he starts, you know, throwing insults at the uh, prisoners, calling them, uh, you know, unwashed masses or uh, inbreeds or anything like that and, you know, not worthy of the name nobility. So then the highest ranking officer in the POW camp, you know, you know, comes at him, steps up and says, you know, you insulted me, sir. I demand satisfaction. Bad idea. Well, that's exactly what the Baron wanted him to do. So the two of them get ready to duel, and uh, it does not go the officer's way. So during that whole during the whole chaos, the our hero is still waiting for his contact, and a uh, development turns up during during all of the madness. So Aerosmith behind enemy lines number two, our number two pick for this week, with four shields out of five. So you got several different fantasy world stone into your explanation there a little bit yeah i kind of got lost where you were going with this how'd you ever get away with not doing game of thrones or lord of the rings i mean come on you have to get everybody in mm. just kidding all right so our number one on the hit parade this week per e-money um a book that we've been bragging about since we started reading it gunslinger spawn number five from image comics all right so in this in the previous issue uh the clown and gunslinger spawn have been duking it out and in this issue you know how like every now and then you got an issue that kind of takes place all in uh the same uh conversation it's one scene yeah well, that's pretty much what you get here so the two of them kind of trade blows back and forth but gunslinger spawn realizes that uh he is out of his depth here absolutely outclassed because you know they they've mentioned several times how 
Gunslinger spawn is the weakest of all the hell spawns, but you know, in my opinion, he's also the coolest. But, oh, he's uh, definitely the coolest. Yeah, but that's just me and you. But uh, Clown is, uh, you know, he can go toe to toe with uh, OG spawn uh, under normal circumstances, but now since he's returned, he seems to be even more powerful than he was before. Well, he, he's juiced up, that's for sure. Plus, he's split from the Violator. Dude. Yeah, so it's like, you know, it's not just the clown that would be coming after him. Plus, he's got all the little mini clowns. Mm-hmm. So, the two of them are at a standoff, and uh, the clown wants Gunslinger to get close to OG Spawn in order to kill him. Well... What Gunslinger wants is to go back to his own time period, the 1800s, the Old West. So the two of them come to a deal, and I, I'm hoping Gunslinger has a uh, trick or two up his sleeve in uh, future issues. But uh, we're going to have to wait to find out. So, like I said, it's like it's one long fight slash conversation in this issue, and you know, it makes for good storytelling. Gunslinger spawn at number five, our number one pick for this week, coming in at... Four shields out of five. All right, so what do we have coming up this week? Well, if you all watched last week's episode, you, you probably heard me say that last week was the largest number of comics that we've gotten in, in the last probably year. Mm. Well, that was last week. This week, if everybody, if ever, all the comics ship, it's going to be even bigger. Oh. I mean, you, 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 they're killing me. Mm. But... That being said, what's coming out? All right. A new Batman book. Imagine that. Yeah, another Batman. A new Batman, Batman yeah. book. It's called Batman Killing Time, number one. All right, the imaginary story or Black Label or whatever it is, uh, Maxi Series, Dark Knights of Steel comes uh -huh. out. And also there's a spinoff called Dark Knights of Steel, The Gathering Storm. Spinoff, okay. Ah, yeah. oh, a book that's been gone for a while. and glad to have it back. The Nice House on the Lake, oh, number seven. Okay. I'm pretty excited about that. Uh, DC's got a new book called The War for Earth 3. All I can tell you about that one is, is all the heroes, maybe the villains, I don't know, they all go to Earth 3, a different Earth, to try and save it mm. from whatever big bad is trying to destroy it. Okay. That's just a guess. All right, I've been hearing for a long time that the fans of... The image book crossover mm -hmm. should be looking forward to number 12 because there's going to be something special about it. Okay. No idea what, but number 12 should come out. All right. And the book we've enjoyed from the get-go is Noctera number 8 ships. Maybe. Okay. Um, Miles Morales gets his own what-if book. Oh, all right. Um, since there's no Daredevil anymore, the, the Daredevil ended at issue 25, Daredevil Woman Without Fear is the only Daredevil story we're going to get. And it's been good. It's just basically a continuation of the regular Daredevil title. Pretty much. Um, you like She-Hulk number one, correct? Mm -hmm. Yep. Maybe a little too much comic relief for this old man, but it was still solid. She-Hulk number two. All right. And we know Doctor Strange is pretty much out of the picture. He's mm -hmm. no longer the Sorcerer Supreme. So we have to have a new Sorcerer Supreme. Mm -hmm. You get a new Sorcerer Supreme, you get a new book and it's called strange number one all right so uh big week this week so get it at your local comic book shop all right so that does it for our comic reviews and previews now let's turn it over to this week's movieism all right so this week's movieism this is one you've seen just about everywhere in movies tv shows whatever this is the shit just got real wall this is a hidden compartment filled with all kinds of weapons and contraptions that someone opens and they're, when they're either under attack or they're about to go attack someone else. So, you know, you've seen it all over. One example is, like, in Men in Black 2, you know, Kay and Jay come into this, you know, unassuming uh, apartment with the family sitting down watching TV. And Kay's like, hey, don't mind me, folks. I left some stuff here when I lived here a few years ago. I need to pick it up. And he, you know, flips some, uh, uh, flips the thermostat a few different directions, and then you know the the wall pops open to a whole hidden room filled with all these different kinds of space weapons in there. And you know, then of course they have to neuralize the family. Better, because trust me, I won't be playing with that thermostat yeah. once he's gone. <laughs> uh, in Firefly, we were just talking about Firefly. 
uh, you know, Jane has his own, you know, shit just got real wall. You know, it's not hidden anywhere. It's just kind of under a blanket in his bunk. So whenever, uh, you know, there's an emergency and he has to get ready, he has to pull the sheet off the wall and, you know, get his gear. And, you know, Supernatural, you know, they uh, don't keep it on a wall. They keep it in their truck. Baby. Right. So whenever they have to gear up to go, you know, fight the monster, they uh, you know, open up the uh, false bottom on the... Uh, on the car and they uh you know get their gear ready dean always wants to gr uh bring the uh grenade launcher but he rarely gets to use it and then finally in wild wild west uh artemis gordon he has one on his uh special train so he just has to hit the button on the uh on the wall and the wall flips open and reveals all the different guns he has well in the real wild wild west he had secret local apartments like that too all right, so there you have it. The shit just got real wall. All right, so that's going to do it for this week's episode of Back Issues. So what do we have going on? Well, we have, it just dropped uh, earlier today, we have a CGC unboxing from the guys at Comic Book World. And it's a big shipment. It's a big box. So, uh, you know, lots of cool stuff on there. So you can check out the video and then also drop by Comic Book World if you're interested in any of those issues. And coming up, we have Moon Knight that we're going to be doing our reaction videos to. Moon Knight comes out March 30th, so, you know, uh, later this month. So be sure to stay tuned for our reaction videos. That's a long way from now. Yep. All right. So we'll see you guys on the next one. Excelsior. True believers, we've been talking about Firefly this whole show. Now, I understand rumors that Disney's going to do a relaunch or something with Firefly. They're going to use the, the, the franchise and hopefully, you know, do more than one season. So if you've never watched Firefly, I, there's get bound to be one of you out there that's not seen Firefly. You've done yourself a disservice. Find the one season of Firefly and the movie Tranquility? Serenity. Serenity. The movie Serenity and watch that show. You'll be sad when it's over because it's it's over. I was. So check it out. <laughs>